afternoon, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much uh, for the organization for the invitation. Well, after these two very, uh, well, very inspired presentations, it will be quite a challenge to speak about standards. <laughs> it's, um, it doesn't uh, show always to be uh, the most sexy uh, subject to speak about, but my, my uh, role here is uh, to speak about the energy performance of building standards developed uh, in Europe. Uh, and I was, and I am, am the chair of the program committee on EPBT, uh, where we um, de developed these standards in the last years. And then, speaking about standards, is, well, why do we need this energy performance building standards? If you can measure, you can manage, uh, that's my statement, and if you don't have a transparent, unambitious, assessment procedures, you can't analyze, report, design, or compare the energy performance of buildings. Flexible standards are essential to uh, facilitate this and to bridge the gaps due to the different building traditions in different countries and regions in the world, climate situation, policy, and technical languages. Precise and unambitious communication on Energy performance of buildings is essential when we want to meet the global targets on greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions reduction and fossil fuel reductions. And if we don't do that in, an, in a clear way, we, we, uh, well, we continue talking and we don't get a result. So the need is clear. We all heard today about uh, the COP21 target, uh, the Paris uh, conference. Uh, we know about the old uh, EU 2020 targets and the energy efficiency first. Uh, Livio just mentioned, and now uh, today it was uh, declared that they really want to have the 30% increase of energy efficiency compared with the 1990 levels. Um, we know that in, in Europe, 40% is used in our buildings, two-thirds is, building, is used in residential buildings, so you should say that's easy uh, technology, of which uh, in 2013, 80% was gas, and we imported for 55%, so there are many reasons to do something. A level playing field is, is however, essential for the market and for policy makers, makers and, and for that we need the standards and when we look at our, our targets our first task is to reduce the energy need of the buildings by measures like insulations and passive solar then to reduce the use by system efficiency improvement smart controls technologies and next to increase the fraction also by our own production of renewable energy and assess and declare the energy performance of buildings in a transparent and in a vicious way and make this visible in the communication with the market, with the regulators, the consumers, the users, make it understandable and that will be quite a challenge if we use all the terminology we have heard this afternoon and I will add to that as well. For this we need standards suited to for local, regional, national and hopefully global applications. And in Europe the observation of the Commission was that this modular structure, transparent and ambitious with flexible set of EN and ISO energy performance of building standards is an important instrument to support the proper implementation of the EPBD directive in the member states in Europe. Next to it is also the basis of the uh, EU voluntary certification scheme that is under development for normal residential buildings. Where are we in this project? 52 standards ready and um, are now out for voting for final vote or formal vote. There are two terminologies in SEN we use, we say formal vote 
and in ISO we say final fund. Closing uh, before the end of January, including the conducted technical reports, because all the standards are supported by technical reports, which contains all the background information, justification, and considerations, and sometimes ex the calculation examples. We didn't want to mix that with standard text. And where relevant connected Excel files are available to support the correct use and understanding of the calculation procedures in those standards. After the formal voting, that's to start by February next year, we expect that all EPBD standards will be published by the national standard bodies in Europe, but for the ISO standards also outside Europe. So this is the picture that shows a little bit the history. We started somewhere in 2011, by 2012, uh, we made the basic principle, the structure of the standards, the overarching standards, with the holistic approach, and then the total set. And this is now out for a final vote. Well, it is a modern structure set of standards, so we uh, we really uh, described a lot of modules. I don't give in this slide all the modules we have. And, uh, um, and we described all the connections between the models to, uh, to modules to work with it. We also uh, proposed to, uh, to bring those standards also to ISO level. We didn't bring them all yet to ISO level. But under ISO, we agreed to have a series of 150 numbers available for the future to describe all issues on energy performance of buildings in general. And uh, that's, we are, you could say, almost halfway. In this slide, uh, you get, get another picture of the set of standards. You could say from, um, from Heat gains. Oh, yes, from heat gains, uh, you to and uh, building properties and climate conditions. Oh, right. The numbers. Okay, the climate conditions and in the environment, you can, based on these standards, you can calculate the energy need, and <laughs> from the energy need, you go to the energy use through the system standards below here on the system standards on cooling, on ventilation, heating, domestic hot water and lighting, taking in account the, the standards on the building automation and controls, and uh, those standards are, uh, the building automation control standards are also very far in going towards ISO level. And now finally you find this, this uh, final standard to express the energy performance of the building. This, I spoke about flexibility and transparency. Why do we need that? Well, we have to be aware that you have local climates, you have uh, also national and regional legal frameworks, and buildings are a part very often of the building regulations in countries. You have uh, traditions and a way of buildings that is, the use of the building that is quite different in different countries. And the in energy infrastructure could also be uh, very different. So the flexibility should be there. Um, the transparency, because we want to express the energy performance of buildings in a transparent way and offer various energy and CO2 emission saving solutions in a transparent way, not uh, uh, giving any, any, uh, any, any uh, advantage to certain technology, it should be transparent. And it is a holistic approach, that is the principle. We, we go from products, you could say, to system approach, where the product is not longer evaluated as such, but as part of a system, but maintaining the links with the product testing and uh, as such. To be able to do so, we organized the work in SEN through uh, five TCs, and, uh, 
and that's uh, I got the wrong one, I suppose. <laughs> um, and that uh, this group, and we had to take into account things that were happening in, in the product TCs as well to uh, connect all these uh, these standards, and we also. Uh, took care of the coordination on, on, on ISO level in a joint work group between two ISO TCs. The flexibility, uh, there is another um, issue I uh, want to explain. How do we make this total set of fish two centers flexible? Uh, do you have to use all the standards? There was a strong request from member states not to require them because they want to bring it step by step. So we built a system where the overarching standard 52000 uh, is the backbone and you plug in all the standards you want to use and you describe exactly for each standard the input and output protocols uh, that are required for that standard or that module. And of course the module itself has also input values like the product data and other local data. So you can replace one of the standards by perhaps a simple model or a simple table as long as you respect the in and output description of that standard. And then the total system still works. So each calculation module needs two types of input data coming from other parts of calculations and data specified by the products or the application conditions and the conditions that has to be satisfied by the custom modules not being the standards, the input data of the replace module together with the custom data shall be complete to be able to perform the calculation according to the module requirements. And that if you, if you obey those rules uh, you can do this uh, flexible approach and step-by-step -step approach. Another issue on the flexibility and the, is that all the EPP standards have an Annex A and B. And what's that? An Annex B includes all the inform informative default choices, input data you need to run the standard. But we don't give the obligation to use exactly those numbers or those uh, choices. Sometimes we give alternatives, sim more simple solutions and more complicated solutions. But we uh, say, okay, you can choose your own as long as you uh, use Annex A, as a, which is an empty template where you can fill in your choices. So it is transparent for everybody how your standard is applied in your country or region. So, and that is especially done for the regulators in European countries, in particular for the application within the context of regional or national legal requirements, these choices, either the default choices and B or the choices adopted to the national or regional needs. But in any case, following the template of Annex A can be made available as a national annex or as a separate legal document but uh, <coughs> following the, uh, the format of the annex A. This is an example of uh, one of the tables in the overarching standard where you can see the, uh, the weighting factors for renew the non-renewable and renewable part of uh, different uh, energy carriers and also the CO2 emission factor. These factors are um, general factors you could use throughout Europe, but if you in a country want to use other factors, that is possible, but you have to declare that. These factors are very important in the, in the total uh, uh, assessment and also declaration of the energy performance of buildings because you have to express the energy performance of a building in kilowatt hours per square meter per year uh, on uh, the primary non-renewable part. So these factors are really very important. 
about the national implementation of the standard, it is expected that the default values and choices in NXNE were not followed due to national regulations or traditions or policies that either the standard institute will consider to add this national annex with all the factors they want to use or that the uh, uh, regional and national authorities, the regulators, uh, will include that in the building regulations also following the template rules. And another uh, issue is about how will those 52 standards be published in the, in, in the, in the countries. Uh, well, generally in, in Europe, uh, the EN standards when published are uh, have a national cover page and an introduction text explaining uh, how the standard can be used, uh, if there is any and in relation to national regulations, uh, what's the version of the regulation, that sort of information is added. And national standard bodies can also publish these national annexes as a separate document or in connection to the standard. And the national annexes <coughs> could be different for a different type of buildings, could be for residential and non-residential different because of the level of simplification. But they could also be different for new buildings, uh, I think for zero energy buildings or for existing buildings. But as I already explained that most standards include calculation procedures um, uh, to uh, help to understand this we, we uh, also developed Excel files and these Excel files are, uh, have been used to uh, support the, and to demonstrate and to validate the standard and also to see if all the modules connected well together. But, and, uh, and for that we used a schedule like this, checking the calculation procedures, um, looking at uh, the formulas in, in the standards, checking them and see if the connections are okay. Through this process we processed all the standards and, and also sets of standards which uh, uh, Excel files are now also available for those who are interested in it on a public uh, domain. Uh, the standards, I always get the question where I can I find the standards? Well, standards are published by national standard bodies, uh, not only the standards but also the technical reports, so you have to get them there. And for uh, a clear overview, I uh, published in the uh, December issue of the Riva Journal that will be available uh, next month. Um, an overview with all the modules so that you have at least a list. And uh, more articles on the UBD standards in general can be found in earlier published uh, Riva journals. We also uh, put on the uh, on public, public link uh, a demonstration of checking the heating uh, system standards, the consistency of the package, the total package of this uh, group of standards that are, you would say, uh, if from the energy point of view, the most important standards for your So you go into the tool, you can really uh, have an idea how they work together. And then, yes, I also mentioned this collaboration with ISO. Uh, 17 of the 52 are now also in ISO standards. We hope uh, that in the coming years we can increase this number. And for Europe is that if they are in ISO standards, the same rules uh, are applicable for as for EN standards. So it means that uh, conflicting national standards has to be withdrawn uh, in time, in a certain time, I think in, in a few years, by the national standard bodies. <coughs> and to uh, summarize is that uh, the standards are able to support the implementation of the EPD. They include uh, EP assessment procedures for building systems 
where today of the existing buildings towards the low and zero energy buildings, the development of the standard offer developed standards offer really the flexibility to apply them throughout Europe. We don't see any, any difficulty in that, and perhaps also globally. And this send an ISO corporate to uh, bring them all to ISO level as well. That concludes the presentation. designer is involved in the preparation of these standards because as the designer if I have 52, sta 52 standards with more than 3,000 pages how I can fulfill all the requirement by the design of the building simple one or complicated one this is not so easy do you have been thinking to make some the job for the designer and it could be more easy? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. Uh, of course, there were in our teams uh, uh, designers around the table, but of course they are on a level that is not the general designer. I agree with you. Um, but uh, we think that the standards are just, you could say, the paperwork needed to build the software tools. Software tools, we also used now in, in all the European countries to do the energy calculation, calculation for energy labels or to do the design. So we hope that there will be a, a possibility to develop a generic uh, software tool uh, based on all of these standards. And the uh, essence is then that you, the user interface for the software tool can be adjusted to national situations. So all these national annexes, all this administrative paperwork, nobody will read it. That, that has to be implemented in those user interfaces so that you can you actually use the same, well, the same software tool in your country as in my country, but the user interface is different. And uh, we, we, we try to build up some, some organization, also in cooperation with Riva, uh, to uh, well, to give some uh, possibility to support such a process, but um, we discussed also uh, with the Commission uh, the need for developing such a, a tool. But there is some on the side of the Commission is always some uh, hesitation to develop uh, software with uh, with money from the Commission because uh, they say, well, if the tool is there, who is maintaining it? And, uh, and, do, and is it not a, a, a conflict of interest that we uh, support developing tools and there are also software houses who are perhaps interested? But if I look back to the first generation of EPBD standards, there we also have seen the software tools in Europe, but they were all very different. I've seen, I think, more as five or ten different software tools on the German market, which give all different answers. I think it's, that's not the idea. Uh, so I hope uh, we will find, uh, with, with help of all of you, a possibility to develop a, a core that is available for all software makers, because the software makers can make the user interface. That's not it's a technician uh, task. We are too stupid for that. We need real software people for that. But uh, I agree that's uh, that is something uh, that has to be done in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.